I was climbing in the Alps on a on a in the winter time on a big sort of spur of rock which is about 1,200 meters high, and I was there with my climbing partner, and we were um, we were both sort of very inexperienced, and we shouldn't really have been climbing the route we tried, um, but. Anyway, it's almost said it was easy. Started it was it got harder the higher you got. So we thought well, we don't know anything. So hopefully when it gets really hard, you know, in a thousand meters time we'll be we'll be up to up to speed. So we started climbing and we climbed all day and we got not that high, maybe five hundred meters something up this up this route. And we were we ended up sleeping on this tiny little like a dustbin lid area of snow on this really steep steep wall. It was the only place we could sleep. And I was and. I was really dehydrated. I was really tired. and It was dark, and um, so we're so uh, we're trying to get in, trying to get in our sleeping bags. It's really really awkward to get any sleeping bags. And our boots, they're um, the foam on the inside and plastic on the outside. And to get any sleeping bag, you need to take the outer part of the boot off. And so my friend had got in the sleeping bag, and I was oh well, I need a drink. I can't do anything. I need some water. Oh, I can't get. I can't do anything. He was like, take your boots off and get your sleeping bag, and I'll I'll sort the water out. I'll I'll, I'll melt some snow. So I was. Um, so I was trying to get in, I was trying to get in there, and I was I was trying taking the outer shell of my boot off, and I was thinking, I just thought, what would happen if I dropped my boot right now? What would ha what would happen? And as I was thinking, it, the boot was sh just shot off my foot, and it sort of flew up in the air, and it, and it landed just at our feet. And for for a brief second, it was like, wow, that was really really close. And then it just turned and toppled all the way down the face. And the first thing I thought was, how can I carry on? I've only got one boot. And then it was like. You're not going to carry on. How am I going to get back down again? It's really, really cold. It's minus 15. You know, I've got no boot. How are we going to get? We've only got one rope. How can we abseil down? And all these things. And my friend just said, "Well, oh, I suppose that's it then. We'll be going down tomorrow." And um, I just had this this huge wave crash down on me of like, of just like, of, I don't know, frustration, horror. What was going to happen? Feeling like an idiot. And um, so it was a really horrible moment. And so I got in my sleeping bag and I was feeling really dejected. And then. There was a suddenly a huge light was switched on, which which illuminated the whole face. When people down in the in the town in Chamonix enjoying their their skiing holidays and eating crepes and sitting in the bar, they could see this face and it looked really amazingly illuminated. So this light shines comes up and it's shining on. It's like a, a thousand billion watts shining straight on us. I'm like, oh, that's just what we need. You know, I've, I've got a huge light on my face. I've, I've lost my boot and now I can't. I'm gonna be able to sleep. There's a big light on my face and. I was feeling really miserable, and oh my god! And then all of a sudden, there was like a, a loud cracking explosion, and and what happened above us, like um, nearly a thousand meters above us, there was a serac, which is like an overhanging part of the glacier, which is hanging over the face, and this serac split off and fell down the side of the spur, and the the, the sound was I'd never heard anything like it. The sound of like thousands of tons of ice just accelerating down the side of the side of this mountain and crashing into things and uh, you could feel like the the um the shock wave coming down the mountain towards us and me and my friend were just like this is it we're going to die and we we sort of held on to each other and we're like this and then all this stuff comes crashing over us and um it envelops us all the, the ice crystals and everything else but amazingly it totally misses us and, and we were okay and i just remember as it cleared I looked down and you could see down at the bottom of the mountain, this this wave of all this ice and debris just spreading out really, really slowly. And as it spread out, all the crystals like r rose up into the air, and they sort of went through the beam of the light, and it created this amazing display of these all this glittering ice. And I just remember thinking, this is a what an amazing what an amazing sight, and how all of a sudden it didn't really matter that I dropped my boot. It, I felt like really positive then. I'd seen this amazing thing that I wouldn't have seen maybe if I'd not dropped my boot. The following day, we decided to we started abseiling down, and we had one rope, so it was very difficult. So I would, um, I had my cramp on, and managed to strap it onto my boot using straps and that kind of thing. And it had a really big mitten, so I put the mitten on the end of my boot as well. So I had this like glove with a cramp on, on all this. Kind of, it looks very comical. And um, so we started abseiling down, and we got to the bottom of the spur, and we were aware now that there was huge avalanches of ice that could come down. So I started, we started running as fast as we could without a boot across across the ice. And all of a sudden, I saw something blue sticking out of all this debris, and I picked it up, and it was my boot. And uh, when I've been on the spare that night, I've been thinking, this is it, I'm never going to climb again, this is just ridiculous. But all of a sudden, finding this boot, I was just like, I, oh, you know, I'm going to be back, you know, you're not beating me, this kind of stuff. And my friend was like, oh my god. And uh, we, for some reason, I didn't put the boot on, I just walked back to the Telefreak station. And there's all these tourists, Japanese tourists there, and this guy turns up with a one boot under his arm and he's a, a glove on his foot, you know, like a, yeah, this is the way we do it in England, this kind of thing. 
and um, yeah, so we, 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 we did, we came back the following week onto the climb and it took us three days to climb it and it was such an in amazingly intense experience that when we finally summited, in a, we summited in a huge storm and it was a real, it was a, it was a, a total battle, battle for survival, that the guy I climbed with, he never ever climbed again, he decided that for him that was, that was it, but for me it was, it was the, the best the, the best climb I ever did probably because it was it was such a struggle and in you know without the struggle it would have been it, it wouldn't mean anything really and um, and, th and through it lots of things you know I realized that this is what I really wanted to do with my life really wanted to go climbing I did subsequently had to have that element of of impossibility you know like um, so my motto in life is if you're not <laughs> if you're not failing you're not trying hard enough so uh, and uh, yeah so, so, so climbs that I, did, that I find are easy they're always a real disappointment. I want, you know, I want to, I want to struggle.